So lots of good stuff coming out of Connect uh, this year from Microsoft. Um, there's a huge focus on cloud, Azure, Azure services. They have uh, some called Azure Functions now. I didn't do too much uh, digging into that, but um, you know, along with this whole cloud thing, there's this big push for for AI and, and bots and you know, uh, language understanding and processing, different things like that. Um, but you know, some of the big takeaways for us would probably be the Visual Studio for Mac. Um, yep, uh, that's um, it's quite a big change on Microsoft's part to actually have a, well a, a product right in Visual Studio on the Mac platform. Um, Aside from Visual Studio Code. Well, that's that's that was quite a, that was quite a big change at the time too. Yeah, it also I, saw some updates. Yeah, it did. Uh, which, uh, Just to, to touch back on Visual Studio for Mac a little bit, um, you know, it's it's nice to see Microsoft actually providing a blessed uh, IDE for the Mac platform. Uh, you know, I think a lot of developers work in a lot of different places now. Um, you know, Microsoft's sort of involved in a, a much larger picture than it used to just be when you know it was coming out of VB6 and the .NET. And, Kind of the early days of uh, C sharp and all that. I mean, and ASP.NET. It's just, it's much different now. Um, I'd like to see some VB6 integration. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so it's yeah. 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 I think we need, I think we need source control for your VB6 code. I think so. I think so. <laughs> so what I'm curious about is, what do you think are like the, some of the flagship items or differences that came out of Connect as far as Visual Studio for Mac goes versus what was already available to you in Xamarin Studio. Sure, yeah, I mean, the clearly new stuff, uh, Visual Studio for Mac, uh, they did add uh, a lot of new project templates, um, so you can now add uh, .NET Core projects directly into your, your Xamarin um, solution, which mm -hmm. is great. Um, some of these templates, too, encompass, like a, say, like a what they call connected apps, uh, which would be a Xamarin Forms application or Xamarin iOS, Xamarin Android, uh, with a .NET Core project along with it. So it would be uh, so. Is that, that's like it would be like an Android slash iOS client, and then you have also a server project for right. of .NET Core. Yep, that's Sweet. all. That's all built into the template. Um, so it, it's cool to see that added. Um, there's a couple other things that they uh, kind of brought out of long previews. Um, they did finally. Update and release the uh, the XAML previewer for XAML forms. Okay. Uh, so this is nice because if you're actually um, you know designing your UI mostly in XAML, which most people do, um, you can actually preview it directly. So you can see what that XAML look like on iOS, on Android. Um, that's just set up aside. So that's actually something that I first heard about back around Evolve in April. I think it actually technically got announced even before that. Uh, but it's great to see that just built into the IDE directly. Um, that's a big feature for Xamarin Forms and the lack of uh, any kind of designer really always made it maybe a little more difficult than people were expecting. So it's, it's nice to see that feature. Nice. Um, they did add a, a, an inspector as well, the Xamarin inspector. I saw that, yeah. um, So I haven't really had that much of a chance to play with it. That's, I believe, still in a preview release too. Yeah. It looks um, pretty cool. Yeah, it, it is cool. It's a nice like three D representation of uh, you know what's on your call stack if you set a breakpoint. What's what's going on in your app? So would that be like the primary use for something like that? I have to. Yeah, I mean that's that's the the use cases they presented it. Um, I'd, I'd really have to play with it some more. Right. But it, it's one of those things that I think is a, a neat idea. It definitely looks cool. <laughs> um, once it's further along and out of preview, I'll probably you use it. So, so uh, the Microsoft's new mobile center that they're positioning, um, I you know I see in it sort of the legacy of Xamarin Test Cloud, uh, Hockey App. Um, it seems like Microsoft's uh, you know trying to leverage some of, of Xamarin's existing tech for testing, um, which is which is great. Uh, both of those uh, services are are really good, and I think uh, it will benefit Microsoft to have um, you know a more a blessed sort of platform. Right. Uh, in these cases. Yeah, so, you know, I've always been kind of amazed by Xamarin's test cloud, okay? Mm -hmm. If ever there was a legacy 
for Xamarin, I think that would be it because they have they have these developer centers with hundreds of devices, right. actual physical devices that are linked up somehow magically right on your machine. It's like they they wrapped up this thing up here you go. Use it. I, I I mean, like I said, I think that's that's one of the incredible things that they actually bring to the table. Um, and it's obviously a paid service, so that's that's one of the things. You know, Xamarin is, is this thing that's, you know, it's this great mobile developer platform that's available to really anybody. You know what I mean? Very, very inexpensive. And then, you know, I think there's huge benefit in that service of having any, really any device that you want. There's, I mean, this you're not just limited to phones or tablets. There's PCs. There's different, you know, different architectures that you can you can try to point to. There's a massive amount of. Um, Oh, sure. usefulness there. Yeah, um, <clears throat> that's definitely true. I mean, even just in its, uh, you know, the, the old Xamarin use cases, part of the reason I was a fan is like, you look at a market as fragments with say Android, and there's just a ton of different uh, versions of the software out there, different manufacturers put their own versions of the software right. out there. There's a ton of different uh, display resolutions, shapes, you know, it, it's just, for UI design, it's, Complicated, so yeah. something like that that just automates a large portion of the process, right? And, and then you lump in there the CI piece of it, this continuous integration piece that Microsoft Mobile Center, right? Microsoft Mobile Center provides for you. So, you know, and I, I guess that would be an alternative to something like Jenkins. But Kelly, you have quite a bit of experience with. Yeah. Uh, um, how do you see that being different than something like like Jenkins? Is it more for from like? A, like an ecosystem standpoint for like a Xamarin ecosystem that way you don't have to use something extra. Uh, I mean, definitely from an ecosystem standpoint for sure. Um, also, just uh, you know something like Jenkins. Um, you know, Jenkins is it, it's good to the extent that it's flexible. Uh, it's also bad to the extent that it's flexible. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> um, you know, solutions like that can get very, very complicated. The more complicated the problem is you're solving with it. You know, mm -hmm. get complicated solutions to go along with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think for something like Xamarin, it's really important because I've used Travis CI in the past mm -hmm. uh, for different web development projects. And like you said, it's customizable as is web development. There's really no, you define your own kind of specifications and things like that. Um, but when you're building something like a Xamarin project, it's kind of in its own league where you have iOS and Android and all these different things coming together. And I mean, uh, you probably know a lot of the inner workings, but I've used Xamarin a little bit and I have no idea what's going on <laughs> under the hood that integrates all those things. So how am I going to customize and set up a continuous integration service when I don't know what it's doing? And that's, I mean, it's good to know those kinds of things, but it's kind of unrealistic to expect everyone to learn something that's so deep, basically just to to get into their workflow. Yeah. And I think that's important with something like Xamarin because it's meant to be easy. You know what I mean? Right. And, you know, things like Xamarin and even great, what we do here at Grape City. Sure. It's, it's, all these things are developed with developers in mind. That sounds kind of corny, but. That, that's how. That's what it is. I mean, they're, they're making people's lives easier, and I think Xamarin is really taking that to the next level. Yeah. Right? As far as taking the continuous integration off your plate, off your developer's plate, mm -hmm. giving you things like Xamarin Test Cloud with all these different devices, it makes it really easy. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. So, Short, you had a question earlier about um, migrating from. Xamarin Studio to yeah, and the few in the future, yeah, the, the future of Xamarin Studio. Studio. <laughs> um, oh, um, I mean, it's oh, go ahead. We think it's going to stay around, or do you think that Visual Studio will replace Xamarin Studio like in the coming? I would, years? I would presume uh, Visual Studio for Mac will replace Xamarin Studio. Yeah, uh, and I'll be happy to see that. I, I, if if Microsoft has a blessed, you know. Yeah, platform, and that's that's all the better, I think, for for Mac users who want to. Right, and you know, from from a user standpoint, as, as a user of Visual Studio myself, I'd rather see um, because I've you know I've, I cut my teeth on Visual Studio. I, I do all my day to day development here in Visual Studio. Um, and Xamarin 
I don't, know, I don't think it was because of the naming or anything about the actual ID, but it always seemed kind of foreign to me. Mm -hmm. And I think this will, you know, give developers, I guess, an easier transition into something like like Xamarin Studio. Although you have all that functionality built into Visual Studio, I mean, if you if you want to use use a Mac, you can. If you use a PC, you can. And I think they're making that transition a lot easier. There's there's still some work to be done. I think, um, you know, I I like Visual Studio for Mac. Uh, I think it's a good uh, starting point, and it is just a preview, so I mean, it truly is a starting point. Um, but I would like to see, uh, one, for Microsoft, uh, UWP support in the project templates for Xamarin Forms. Um, that's just something that I feel like if Microsoft really wants to push UWP, they should try to put that as many places as they can in a cross-platform solution like that. Um, you know, for universal Windows platform, I think it makes sense to kind of start marrying that with Xamarin more. I think putting that in Visual Studio for Mac and the project templates is yeah is a good starting point. Um, we were talking earlier. Um, you know, if you wanted to do UWP development um, using Xamarin Forms, I mean that's it's not possible directly in Visual Studio for Mac, but you know you could use Visual Studio twenty fifteen or the twenty seventeen RC. Um, and you can develop a Xamarin Forms application with that project template, uh, and you can you can pull it into Visual Studio for Mac. You just can't really do much with the UWP part. So, so the compiler won't handle it. The MS like the um, the Roslyn compiler or something like that wouldn't be able to. Handle right, it. right now it's not set up that. To... So if you were to create, let's say you you create a project, a UWP project on this machine right here, a PC in Visual Studio 2017, okay, and you set it to compile using .NET Core. Which you can. Um, yeah. Why wouldn't you be able to use it on Visual Studio for Mac? Why wouldn't well, you be so, able to compile it? So that's part of my hope for why they might add it. I mean, okay. the, the compiler, um, you know, that, that's a version of that is build. Uh, it's a version of Roslyn that's, mm -hmm. that's running on, uh, on Mac um, through Visual Studio for Mac. So the functionality should be there. I'm sure there's some refinement that would need to be take, taken into account, but. Uh, you know, hopefully in the future that, that that's something to do. Yeah. Outside of adding UWP to, to the project templates, I don't have too much else to add. Um, what, one thing that I do find interesting um, for Visual Studio for Mac and for uh, VS Code, um, so there's Git integration in both. Uh, TFS integration is actually conspicuously absent uh, in Visual Studio for Mac. Um, and I uh, personally, uh, just as someone who works in TFS quite a bit, um, if they actually did add TFS support in Visual Studio for Mac, there would really be a boon. Um, I think that that would make a lot of people who've been with uh, Xamarin development for a while it would make their lives a lot easier. Um, that being said, I don't, you know, I don't know exactly what their plans are. So, yeah, I think you know, in my opinion, this is this is totally, you know, my opinion. Um, I think they're make, they made the right choice in what to integrate first. Um, you know, Git has a huge market share. I know uh, you use it, you yeah. use it, I use it. Christian uses the heck out of it. So um, I think that was I think that was the right way to go. But you're right. Um, they do need if it's going to be an actual Microsoft e part of the ecosystem. I think TFS can't be absent. There needs to be some kind of integration there, even if it's just. You know, as simple as what the Git integration used to be in Visual Studio Code. Even if it's that simple, you have to have some kind of piece of it in there. And I thought I could have I could have sworn, you know, that during the one of the Connect keynotes, I heard them say something about uh, TFS integration with Visual Studio Code. I'm not sure. It could uh, it, like I said, this could have been a roadmap thing. Uh, like I mean, a there, potential functionality thing. There, there are definitely certain ways. I mean, even with Xamarin Studio, there were ways you could integrate it with TFS, but it wasn't. Uh, you know, it wasn't directly like Microsoft's path. It was sort of, you had a local Git repository and you used a tool to basically check that in and out of TFS, those changes. Um, so there was like two layers of commits you had to do. And, uh, yeah. Actually, they could do the same thing in Visual Studio for Mac. As, they, as like a oh, they, they could. Uh, what I would actually like to see, though, is uh, you know the source control explorer, some kind of visual reference. The same thing you get in Visual Studio. It's, it's okay, Visual, Visual Studio, Studio I mean, yeah. for everyone, Chris, we call it <laughs> Visual Studio for everyone, <laughs> Visual Studio for Mac. So, no, I think that's good. Um, that's one of the things I, I, I do like. Granted, I don't use TFS 
as much as maybe, uh, maybe you or you know some of the development teams. But um, I, I personally have gone gone the way of Git. Uh, so I, I would like to see that that kind of functionality for you know these all encompassing teams of Git, the web piece, and you have somebody who's doing like uh, WinForms or WPF development um, who already have an investment in the TFS source control system. Right. Um, you know, to make some of these changes and to have access to something like that on a Mac while you're updating these applications. So maybe something like UWP in the future uh, in uh, Visual Studio for Mac. That'd be kind of cool. I, I'd like to see it just because I feel like uh, Microsoft has a lot of uh, different loose threads out there, different products they've come up with through the years. And, uh, you know, it just would be nice to see them commit more firmly, I guess, around you know, specific set. So, cool. All right, so closing remarks. What do you th what do you think about uh, what are your thoughts on Visual Studio for Mac Air Yeah. 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 No, just a little, uh, Troy is he's probably the biggest advocate for Mac use <laughs> in this entire building. So yeah. certainly, yeah, of true. course, we're going to get a recommendation for Visual Studio for Mac and Troy. Uh, Kelly's a you know Kelly has an Apple background too, so he's I'm, I'm sure he's excited for it. What say you from the Windows <laughs> camp, Christian? I I think it's good. I think it was a necessary step at some point. Um, like we talked about, I I think technically, honestly, it's implemented really well, and I think a lot of what needs to be there is there technically. I think the .NET Core was their biggest step in that yeah. direction um, that enabled a lot of this. I think Microsoft has a ton of ecosystem. Um, I don't want to say problems, but I, I think just things they need to address. Um, and I think that's kind of why we still see some of these weird like UWP uh, disconnects. Because, you know, they're trying to sell this, this tool that you can use to develop for multiple platforms, and they never tie UWP into that, or Windows Phone, you know, at all for that matter. So I think right now they have on an outstanding portfolio, especially with Visual Studio for Mac, to not stray away from what you asked yeah. too much. But um, yeah, I think they need to start tying some stuff together, but they're, they're doing a good job of it. It's I, exciting stuff. I agree with all of that. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a PC user, but um, I'm all about um, further developing the Microsoft. Yeah, you're, you're a PC user, but you've got an iPhone. I do have an iPhone. I do have an iPhone. It's public. I'm, I'm, I'm going Windows Phone very soon. Uh, so, um, that's pretty much it. One more thing that, that I do feel that, that should be mentioned here um, is the addition of another operating system that's Tizen. That's, uh, this was another thing. And while we're on the topic of mobile, um, it doesn't really have anything to do with Visual Studio for Mac, but while we're on the topic of mobile, uh, Visual Studio actually has some extensions and templates, project templates for Tizen. This operating system that, as Christian said, uh, we're not sure where it, where it came from. It was, it was popular at one point, and then it wasn't, and now apparently it is again. Yeah, it, it was Samsung's ill-fated attempt to take down Android, and I, it's interesting that it still has traction with yeah. some people, I think. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. It, look, sure. it looks okay. And I think, like, I mean, this just goes to the point that, you know, Visual Studio as an ecosystem is just expanding. Um, and they're making it so easy to do things, taking things off premise with things like Azure and, and services and bots, you know, taking the human element and putting it into these applications with, applications with artificial intelligence and things like that. All good things. Yeah.